Hi guys! So, congratulations! We've made it through the first half of 2017. Why am I saying congratulations? Well, it's because everything in K-pop has gone wrong for the first half of this year. Everything. So, yeah, a lot of bad things from breakups to scandals seem to be happening at least once a week for the last six months. And I think it's safe to say that there are very few K-pop fans out there that didn't feel sad or mad or just plain done in some way or another. And if you are one of those K-pop fans who are still chipper and happy and everything is going well for your favorite groups, I hate you. I don't hate you. I kind of hate you. Just, just a little bit. But since this list is like ridiculously long, it's ridiculously long. Um, I'm only going to be covering disbandments and members leaving groups. I'm not going to be talking about more speculative things like Miss A, if they'll still stick around because they're still in the middle of contract negotiations, or FX's Amber and Super Junior M's Henry hinting at not being happy with SM or the way that their careers have panned out right now. I just want to for now talk about solid, concrete, for sure things that have happened in one video. Let's get started. To soften the blow of disbandment news, let's talk about some not-so-surprising ones first. The first one being IOI. This will by far be the least surprising disbandment because it was a conditional disbandment from the start. IOI was only going to promote for one year after the top 11 members were chosen through the Mnet reality show program Produce 101, which was a smash success somehow, and then they were going to break up after that year since all of the girls were under contract in different companies anyway. On January 17th, they released their final single, Downpour, and disbanded at their last concert on January 22nd. The members have said that they hope to reunite as IOI in the future, maybe five years from now, and Mnet just finished with their second season of the show, Bro I mean Produce 101 Season 2, this time with male trainees. And the top 11 are 101, which I liked this name a little bit better. But They are expected to debut in August and promote for 18 months instead of the 12 months that IOI did. On January 3rd, MIB, which originally stood for Most Incredible Bastards, but was later changed to Most Incredible Busters, fun fact, disbanded. This group is most well known for having Japanese member Kangnam, who's something of a humble variety show star while being in MIB. Kangnam went on to a show a few weeks after the disbandment to talk about the reason behind it, where he said that it was because MIB and their company were in a lot of debt, and they had no choice but to disband. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. And I think that's why a lot of the non-Big 3 groups disband, which is sad because there are so many underrated and overlooked rookie groups out there. But if people aren't buying their stuff, then the groups can't go on, which is the what happened with MIB. And I actually really like this refreshing honesty about the disbandment. It's not creative differences. It's not difference in musical styles. It's we're broke. Thanks for keeping it real, MIB. On February 6th, it was announced that Spica, who were known for having powerful vocalists and for being Lee Hyori's little sister group, would disband with all of the members looking to different companies to do solo activities with. The members have said that they may be going to different companies, but that it's definitely not the end of Spica, citing that they may come back together someday. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that they broke up for the same reason as MIB, which is a lack of money or just a lack of general interest. They were always regarded as a talented group, but maybe they didn't have the same quirky personalities as their similar group Mamamoo, and so they were less well received by the public. And all the praise they got for having good vocals and songs didn't translate to sales. Like you can say, that they, oh they're such good singers, it's a sad thing that they didn't get famous. But it means nothing if you don't buy anything for them to support them. Just chalk it up to it being a shame that another great talented group wasn't able to make it, but I have no doubt that they'll all definitely succeed on their own. And finally, while their disbandment was already announced in November of 2016, and I talk about it for quite a while and how I felt about it in a different video, 21 officially disbanded on January 20th after the release of their final music video, Goodbye. Minzy had already left the group by the time the song was made and the video was released and has now become a solo artist. Dara and CL re-signed to YG as solo artists as well and it's 
It's not really known what's happened with Bom right now. She's active on social media, and she just seems to be laying low and relaxing, as she should. But I have high hopes that she'll come back as a soloist too, despite all the naysayers. They did what I've always wanted a disbanding group to do, which is to release a final song or album, because it's just, it's just nice closure for the fans, and it gives the artist a proper way to say goodbye instead of just it suddenly being announced and then they have to go and post a statement on social media about it. Like, that's not personalized. That's not a resolved ending. I like this a lot better. And on the opposite side, you know, it's very bittersweet, but it's a nice bow on top of the presence that was 21. So I'll take the bitter and still be sad about it. Okay, enough of the easy ones. Let's get to the more devastating ones. Prepare your hearts. Okay, now one disbandment that shocked not only me and the fans, but seemingly the entirety of South Korea was the Wonder Girls. On January 25th, it was confirmed by JYP that the Wonder Girls would be disbanding, with Yeon and Sunmi leaving JYP and Lim and Yubin re-signing to JYP as solo artists. There was some speculation about this disbandment since their contracts had expired and there was no word of them immediately re-signing with JYP, but it was still very, very shocking. They thankfully released one final song, Draw Me, before their breakup, giving fans, again, a little bit of closure. I think what was so crazy about their disbandment was that they did the impossible and reformed as a group with a band concept and made it work. Why So Lonely is still my jam, and the final two albums they released with this band concept were amazing. People really had high hopes of them carrying on with this, and they were finally regaining the popularity that they lost with their infamous venture to the United States. And that Yeon and Sunmi didn't re-sign is also kind of strange because they've been with JYP for so long. I still think it's one of the most shocking breakups this year, and yeah, it still kind of stings. Okay, so I wanted to cover every group that had been confirmed disbanded that at least had a Wikipedia page to their name. One of the first ones I'll be covering as far as this sort of not-so-known extent is Chocolate. They were known for being the first mixed group, consisting of both full-blooded Koreans and mixed-slash-half-Korean members. They hadn't released anything since Black Tinkerbell way back in 2013, so this is uh, one of the more obvious disbandments, but the interesting thing about it is that their disbandment wasn't confirmed until February 2017 by ex-member Melanie. She did an interview with K-pop commentary site Kpopalypse about her time in Chocolate and how she knew the group was going to disband but how she wasn't really allowed to say anything until the contract expired in February. It's actually a really cool read and it gives a very real look into the K-pop world and what being a K-pop artist is like. So maybe you'll think twice if you're thinking about becoming a K-pop idol. There were rumors of Zaya breaking up earlier this year because some of the members were looking for other agencies to take them in. In this year alone, four of the nine members have signed on to other agencies outside of their Zaya-based agency, Star Empire. Hyunsik and Shiwon, who are more well known for their acting nowadays, both signed on to acting-geared agencies. Dongjun, who signed on to an agency founded by Zaya's former manager, fun fact, and Kwang Hee, who enlisted in the military this past February, who has also made statements in the past about how he would rather focus on his variety show image than perform as a singer because he feels like variety is more well suited for him. However, in March, these rumors were dispelled by Shiwon in an interview where he said, As we officially reported, many of the members are now under different agencies. However, despite this, we are still one group, which is why the name Zaya remains. Since we went through difficult periods together, I think it's important for us to support each other's endeavors. This is why I don't want to associate the word disbanded with Zaya. So it's basically a Kara thing where they say they're still together, but they're doing their own thing, all under different companies. Hopefully that's true. Then again, they haven't released anything since 2015, and their agency can't manage themselves out of a paper bag. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now this is a group you may not have heard of for anything besides their disbandment. Mix may not be a group that you know by name, but they are so far the only group to be forced to break up. And it's all because of THAAD. We're getting political here, so bear with me. THAAD is a US Army anti-ballistic missile defense system that South Korea and Washington agreed to build in order to protect South Korea from North Korean attacks. 
China condemned this agreement and the missile process, but they can't really do anything about it to stop the program in itself. However, they can and have been taking out their displeasure on South Korea economically through South Korea's pop culture influence in China. From South Korean foods to dramas and especially K-pop, China has banned, blocked, and boycotted anything South Korea from entering China. For K-pop, this includes banning K-pop bands from promoting or touring in China. But for Mix, this resulted in the disbandment of their group on March 17th, because three of Mix's five members are Chinese. According to Mix's company, when their Chinese partner dissolved their partnership because of that, they had no choice but to send the Chinese members back home and disband the group because then there'd only be two of them. They'd only been around for a year, so they really got no chance to even try to make an impact in the industry. I guess the only good thing to take away from this is that all five girls were let go from their contracts without any debt to pay, which is pretty huge nowadays, despite the company saying that they lost a lot of money as a result of this. Another group you might have only heard of because of their disbandment, The Legend debuted in 2014 but sued their company, SS Entertainment, in 2016. They cited that they were unable to get singing and dancing lessons, they had no management or transportation, and that their dorms had no gas or electricity. They were basically living in filth with their company turning a blind eye to it. Good news? On May 16th, after a nine-month legal battle, the group won their lawsuit. The bad news? This led to them having to get their contracts cancelled, so they were forced to disband. From what I can tell, they really just wanted to get better treatment. You know, like, I don't know, treated like human beings. But they didn't want to break up. I'm guessing, again, that this company just didn't have the means to fund a K-pop group, which is a fault of a lot of, you know, little companies. So if you take the time to look up the legend and hear about their horrible living conditions, you'll agree with me when I say that this disbandment is most likely the best thing that could happen for them. Okay, now this one was a bummer because I was hoping really great things from them, but on May 12th, it was announced that History, who debuted in 2013, was disbanding. Their leader, Kyung Il, had just enlisted in the military back last year, and it was revealed that the remaining four members would soon be enlisting as well. Their company said that even though their group activities were over, all of them would remain under the company and would continue all as solo artists, which kind of seems silly to just disband if all the members are still going to stay in the company anyway. But I get it. Like, they aren't super junior where they can keep going if one or two or even three members enlist at the same time, or Big Bang who have strong solo careers. It happens, but at least there's a chance we can see them together again. Finally, the most recent and shocking disbandment for me thus far, Sistar. You knew it was coming. Not the disbandment, this piece of news. On May 22nd, Starship announced that with their contracts coming to an end, the girls decided not to continue on as a group, with Soyu and Daesam staying under Starship, and Hyorin and Bora signing on to different agencies for their solo careers. They said they didn't break up for any bad reason, just that they felt their time as a group had come to an end, and they wanted to walk individual paths. Now, this breakup kind of came out of nowhere. They're one of the top girl groups. There have never been any news of scandals or member discord, and then BAM! This happens. No one saw it coming. But the amazing thing about the disbandment is how they disbanded. Like the Wonder Girls in 21, they released a final song and music video, Lonely. But unlike Wonder Girls and 21, they made their disbandment almost like a really fun happening to the point where you almost forgot that they were disbanding at all. They promoted the song on shows, they did medleys of all their hit songs, they did interviews, they did broadcasts, they hung out together and were clearly parting ways amicably. It was amazing, which I'll never say for a disbandment ever again. It was such a wonderful way for them to part with their fans and have them remember all the good times instead of focusing on the sad time. Thank you, Sistar, for your seven years and for making them fun up until the very end. Alright, this is a stupidly long video, huh? So let's take a break and reconvene for part two. More happy stuff involving members leaving groups. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I tried to get all the groups that broke up this year. I might have missed a couple, but if I did, let me know in the comments below. And which breakup was the hardest for you? 
Let's all cry together and maybe seek some sort of weird K-pop therapy. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in part two. Bye-bye.